if I lived in Nazi Germany and I found out about the camps and I found out about the soap, then you get to a certain point where you're going to decide, well, it's not worth my effort, it's not me they're coming after, I'm just going to go home, take a shower and use the soap and wash my hands of it, or you can say no. And to me, it's a moral imperative at a certain point, if you have any personal integrity, if you have any moral consciousness, uh, you realize a certain amount of truth about these things, and you can't turn around, you can't go back, you can't go take up the good life and live the privilege and live the lie, because the lie's gone for you. Uh, and uh, at that point, I think you have to, regardless of the consequences, even if it means that I might get killed for speaking out, go ahead and speak out, because it's the only thing to do. Um, what, what the hell does it mean that they kill me? Do you know how many people they kill every day? In the third world, in my name, and supposedly, you know, with my sanction if I keep silent? What on earth does, does one death of one person in the United States mean? What would, what would the death of one uh, German who cooperated with the fascist regime mean? What's it worth? I mean, uh, if we're here for some purpose, it seems to me, it's to figure out who and where we are and, and uh, take back our lives and get at that truth. And, uh, you know, there'll probably, unfortunately, be more comment about my death, if I ever do die, uh, than there'll be about, about the hundreds of people that were killed at Jonestown. And these were predominantly black people, um, which was never discussed, about the, the, the millions of, of African people uh, currently dying of AIDS and dying of cholera. Uh, tremendous level of death all around the world, both intentional and through the forced starvation and uh, the exploitation of labor and the near slavery conditions. Uh, but those deaths don't bother us uh, much. I mean, most of us go on with our lives and don't think about them. But we're part and party to genocide in these current systems, and we have to speak up, it seems to me, uh, even if there's some cost to us. So if what they want to do is kill me, uh, it's fair game. Uh, I don't want to kill them. I want to bring them back their human consciousness and, uh, and give them some chance at, uh, at seeing again what, uh, what real human existence and communication is. Uh, my favorite dream, and it's a, it's a dream, a very powerful dream I had, and I'd like to write a book about it, is one in which I'm pursuing one of these Nazis with a group of people. It's, in, it's set in England in the 1890s, and the gaslight running down these brick alleys, and the Nazis like... Uh, sort of like Jekyll, of, you know, with the little top cap and the cape. He comes to the back gate of the house where he's got to go in, and he hasn't got time to fumble out the key and get in before we catch up with him, and he turns terrified toward us, and instead of a face, he has a skull. Because his human face is gone. And instead of a weapon, I pull out a little pouch and open it up and hold the flesh of his human face back up to him. That's my dream vision. And I don't like Nazis or fascists one single bit, but I know what human existence is worth. I know who we are at the deepest level. And I know what we have to offer each other, even if we haven't committed those sorts of crimes. And I exist in a society that most of my life has totally ignored the worth of the people around me. And I just feel that it's my responsibility, duty-bound, to reverse that direction. 